This is Inside the Deal. I'm Nathaniel Baker, Middle Markets Editor for The Deal. I'm sitting here with Greg Smith, Head of Investment Banking Services at CIT, and we are talking about middle market deal making activity. Um, big question, Greg, is where now for middle markets? How does this fall out in the broader financial markets affect deal making in the middle markets, and what can we expect going forward? Uh, that's a lot, and I'll try to put in some bite size, but certainly the events of the last couple of weeks are going to cause a great deal of stress in the middle market deal flow. We, we've uh, got deals in the market right now, not just we, but the, the entire marketplace that are pausing. They're taking a little bit of a pause. And we're trying to figure out where they're going to go in terms of pricing and structure. And then we have deals that folks were getting ready to launch that are certainly stopping. So, you know, I'm, I'm giving it to you from both the M&A perspective as well as the financing perspective. And the, the fallout is going to be fairly traumatic over the next three months. Uh, but traumatic over the next three months doesn't necessarily mean it, it's going to stop forever. Uh, it just means the next three months are going to be uh, pretty rough for all of us. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, things that I thought about middle markets is that they were somewhat sheltered right. from you know the broader you know M and A activity, and that you know small companies, especially ones with you know healthy balance sheets and, and solid business plans, et cetera, et cetera, you know would still you know be attractive takeover targets. Right. Now you're saying that's not the case. Well, the middle markets have held up much better than the larger markets, much, much better. And part of that is the, the financing for the transaction has really fallen away from the traditional players, which is the uh, universal banks and the large regionals. They've stepped back out of the market. Now it's left up to uh, the commercial finance companies and the other specialty lenders, as well as hedge funds and other folks. And we play in a much smaller marketplace. So where you can get a, four banks to club together $100 million financing on the lower end of the middle market, you just can't find the credit on a consistent basis for the large deals. So the middle market has held up much better, but I think the events over the last several weeks are causing even the middle market to pause. Mm. So players that were looking like they were going to come into the market, they're having a tough time getting into the market. Folks that had been lending aggressively into the market are taking a little bit of a breath. And then even the, uh, the large regionals and the universals that we expected to eventually come back into the market, that looks like it's going to be delayed another six to nine months uh, longer than we thought it would as well. Mm -hmm. So what kind of financing are you seeing in the deals that are getting done? All right. Uh, the, the, the amount of equity required to get a middle market transaction done has probably doubled over the last year, whereas 12 to 15 months ago, we were seeing a lot of deals get done with 20% equity. Right now, you're starting at 35% equity, and a lot of it's even more than that. Mm. So you need a lot more equity to get a deal done. And then the pricing is blown out from two perspectives. Uh, LIBOR is, is moving back up. I think it moved up almost uh, 30 to 50 basis points in the last 30 days. Mm -hmm. So LIBOR is spreading out a little bit. And then the spread we're looking for over LIBOR, not just we, but the entire middle market, it's moved from LIBOR plus 300 basis points to probably north of LIBOR plus 500 basis points. So um, you, you're talking about you need more equity and your debt's going to be more expensive. And then once you do get it done, like the leverage, I mean obviously middle markets were never really that crazy with leverage, but it's gotten even less so, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. There's much, much leverage on any transaction. The covenants are a little bit tighter. Uh, we're putting more tripwires in place so we get some early warnings uh, there. So uh, the, the, fundamentally, I believe the market is starting to reprice risk in the middle market. I think the repricing of risk is appropriate, but uh, it is going to put a pause on some of the activity that's going on. You're just not going to be able to get the values you were in the past when you could leverage a company six to one. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you're leveraging it three and a half to four to one, uh, someone's got to come up with the, with the difference, and that, that equity is much more expensive than the debt, obviously. Okay, so is there any kind of silver lining that we can see? And, you know, there's been a lot of talk about private equity firms entering this market from the buy side, obviously. Um, and a lot of them have been raising large amounts of capital the last couple of years. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about them going after these companies, uh, perhaps even being aggressive in, in buying them. Have you seen any of that yet? The, the private equity firms have performed a, a, and continue to stay in the market in a great fashion. But, but when you get right down to it, you need a willing buyer and a willing seller. And while the private equity firms do have a lot of capital and they are looking for bargains, you have to have sellers willing to sell uh, mm -hmm. for bargain prices. And uh, what we've seen, because this has been going on really now on a dramatic basis for about a year, most of the, most of the sellers can wait a year. 
Can they wait two years? I don't know. So uh, we're going to work our way through the bubble. More folks are going to have to come through the marketplace, but we do have to match up buyers and sellers. And right now, there's probably more buy side appetite than there is sell side appetite. Interesting. Thank you, Greg Smith, for participating. I'm Nathaniel Baker. This is Inside the Deal. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome.